Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutadeya Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namani Namaste Sarasvati Devam Guru Vani Vichayani Nivisha Shishunya Bhadi Pashti Jari Sadeni Namo Vishnu Padaya Radha Gaya Priyatana Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Nara Iti Namani Vanchakal Patru Bhishya Krita Sundu Bhaya Vichya Patitana Bhavane Bhyo Vishnu Bhavyo Namo Namo He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandho Jigat Pate Gopisha Gopika Kantarada Kantana Mosite Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Panamami Hare Priye Hare Krishna Hare Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pranitananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaurabhati Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Yeah, so um, hmm. I, want just, I, I want to speak a little about uh, uh, um, uh, pure bhakti, Shuddha bhakti. Because there are different types of bhakti. Um, Basically, there's two types of devotees. There's a pure Vaishnava. He has no material desires in his heart. And um, he has Krishna Prem. Krishna says in Bhagavatam, I live in the hearts of my devotees. Mm -hmm. And um, my devotees uh, 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 are in my heart, and I am in the hearts of the devotees. So they're the pure Vaishnavas. And then the, the uh, conditioned souls, Jiva Buddhas, they are coming from um, Karanadaksha Vishnu. Mm -hmm. So when the Jiva Bada, when, when the Jiva is coming from Karanadaksha Vishnu, uh, because the, 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 the Jiva has three qualities, eternity, um, uh, bliss, and knowledge, Satchitananda. So um, when the Jiva is coming from Karanadaksha Vishnu, he has Sat, eternality. He doesn't have uh, uh, chitananda. He doesn't have knowledge and he doesn't have bliss, ecstasy. So that's why when the jiva sees maya, because he doesn't have uh, uh, chitananda. When he sees maya, he goes, oh, so beautiful. I want to enjoy this. I want to be, because the jiva wants to be happy, wants uh, uh, ananda. Jiva wants ananda. But the, when we came from Karadadaksha Vishnu, we don't have ananda. So when we see some uh, happiness, material happiness, we go, oh, that looks so good. When we see the, the, the mother loving the child, or when we see husband and wife, or, then um, we're very attracted to that. Even now, we see um, you know, young couple, uh, maybe husband and wife, maybe only lovers, you know, we see and we see how they how they exchange glances and how how affectionate they are with each other. Our hearts melt. We 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 think, oh, so wonderful. I would love that, you know. Um, so we are in this condition <coughs> because we don't have uh, um, uh, chit ananda. We don't have knowledge. We don't have bliss. So in Bhagavad Gita, there's one shloka, Tadvini Padipatena Padiprashnena Sevaya Upadekshanti Te Gyanam Gyaninas Tattva Darshana. You know this shloka? Yes. You know this shloka? No? <laughs> That's right. So, um, uh, so Krishna says, once you approach a bona fide spiritual master, and two things we should do. We should inquire submissively and render service. So when we inquire submissively and when we render service to Guru, then he becomes happy with us. And then when Guru becomes happy, what happens? Tad vidi pari prashnena sevaya upadekshanti te yanam jnanas tattva darshanaha we get darshan of tattva, of jnana. And what is tattva? What is jnana? It is, it, is, uh, it is our siddha pranali, who we are. 
I mean, we, we, we're these bodies now. We're man, woman, or whatever. Um, and, uh, uh, but this is not us. This is not really who we are. So by Maya, Maya covers the jiva. And so within illusion, we're thinking we're man, woman, like this. But our real identity is Krishna Das, Anil Das, Anil Das. So we all have, in a seed-like form, we all have a relationship with Krishna. There's different relationships one can have with Krishna. We have one of those relationships with Krishna. So Tattva Darshana means that we understand what is our relationship with Krishna. What is, what is our identity? You know, uh, what is our service to Krishna? What is our body? Uh, what is our village? Who our parents are? Like this, you know? Like Lord Shiva once. When he saw, <coughs> when Lord Shiva saw the Rasa dance, um, he 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 wanted to enter that Rasa dance. It's so attractive we can't imagine. But when he saw that, he wanted so much that he prayed to Purnamasi, "Please let me let me enter this Rasa dance." So Purnamasi gave uh, Lord Shiva the body of a gopi, so he entered the Rasa dance. And the gopi said, who's this? Who, who are you? What is your name? What are your, who are your parents? What is your service? You know? And they're slapping him on the face. <laughs> and Lord, you know, Lord Shiva is so powerful. You know, he's, he can destroy the, He destroys the whole creation at the end. You know? He's so powerful. But the gopis, they're more powerful than Lord Shiva even. And they're slapping him. And he's praying, help, Purnamasi, help me. You know? So then Purnamasi came and then um, he got the blessing of being the protector of the Holy Dharma. So when we go to the Holy Dharma, we should first ask Lord Shiva, please allow us to enter this Dharma. Because this Dharma, what we see, is a material covering. We are in the Dharma, but we don't know it. You know? So... Um, so we ask Lord Shiva to actually be able to enter this dham. Then when we can actually enter into the dham, then um, we can experience the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Wherever we, if we can enter this dham, wherever we go, wherever the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we can see those pastimes. We can, we can experience those pastimes. Because these pastimes are eternal. They, they never end. Anyway, what was I saying? Tattva Darshana, the, uh, the Siddha Pranali. Um, so, and, you know, this is the purpose of human life. Krishna created this human form of life. So we can, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, we can uncover this relationship with Krishna. So this, this is the purpose of human life. So as I said in the beginning, there's two types of devotees. There's pure Vaishnava and there's a Jiva Bada. So the Jiva Bada is covered by Maya. Um, by the th because Maya works in three, three gunas. Rajagun, Tamagun and Sattvagun. Mm -hmm. And so we are now uh, under the influence of those gunas. So material nature works like that. It's the, operate, the operation of Maya is through the three gunas. So we are bound um, by these three gunas. And, um, but the pure Vaishnava, he, 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 uh, uh, doesn't, he has no material desire. Krishna uh, will not enter the heart if there's any material desire there. He won't enter. We cannot experience Krishna if we have some, even some slight smell of material desire. Krishna will not enter. So our heart has to be totally pure. And that's why Krishna sends Guru. Because Krishna will not. But Guru, he, he enters our hearts. At the time of Diksha, uh, the Guru uh, will be with us. There's that, what's that for Chakshushana? Chakshushana Janmi Janmi 
Prabhu said, so Guru, he, birth after birth after birth, he is with us. Prabhupada, went, a devotee once asked Prabhupada about that, and Prabhupada said, um, yes, that's true, but don't take advantage. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so the so the uh, the the guru, the pure Vaishnava, he he will enter. And so, ordinary people, they have the super soul within their heart, and the super soul, uh, the conscience that people have is coming from the super soul. Um, Krishna says in Gita, I am situated in everyone's heart, from me comes knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. So Krishna is giving that, like if someone wants to do something wrong, then there's a little voice inside going, no, nah, bad, shouldn't do this. That's Krishna in the heart. And if we do something good, we go, yes, we should do this. So Krishna is always giving direction. He's in the heart of every living, everyone and he's giving direction. But at the time of Diksha, because Krishna says in the first chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita uh, that I am the Guru. When Guru comes before us, this is me. I am the Guru. So Guru is representative of Krishna. He's actually uh, Krishna in the form of Guru. But he's, he's Jiva, mostly Jiva. So um, when the uh, Guru then, when we take Diksha, then Guru will give us direction. But Guru is Krishna anyway, according to Chaitanya Charitamrita. So the, our conscience uh, that we have from the time of Diksha, it's a spiritual conscience. <laughs> you know? Like before that, it's a material conscience. You know, according to Dharma or Adharma, then we get giving direction from within. But when we get Diksha, then Guru is situated in the heart. Janmi, Janmi, uh, Chakshudam, Dilei, Janmi, Janmi, Prabhu said, life after life, he's with us. And um, so, um, yeah, so then we, our conscience then becomes spiritual. I want to tell you a story. This is a very personal thing, you know, and I can't be sure, but you know, I'll tell you the story. I, I was when I was a brahmachari, I was in Australia, and I was distributing books on the street, and um, so I, I became tired. So I decided, um, I, you know, I, I, I needed a rest. So I decided, okay, I will sit down, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and there was a fruit store there, and those cherries looked so good. I had to get some cherries. So I offered the cherries and then I'm eating the cherries, sitting on, you know, which I shouldn't do. But, uh, and then all of a sudden this young man, he was maybe 25, maybe 28 years old, something like that. He was dressed immaculately. He was dressed in this blue suit and had very fine stripes, not loud, not, you know, but very fine, you can hardly see the stripes. But it just looked beautiful. He was dressed a beautiful tie, you know. I couldn't believe it. It's one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen in my life. So then he sits, he, he, he begins talking to me, you know. And uh, I, then I respond. I'm, I'm very friendly, mostly, most of the time, very friendly person. So he started talking to me. I was just in awe of his beauty. And um, so I, I was talking to him. And then he sat down to me. And then he started to tell me that you are not following your spiritual conscience. And he, he told me that, because I was a Pujari, so you know, most of the day, every day, I'm, I'm dressing the deities or I'm cooking or like that for, for, for the deities. And so you know, I would be taking shortcuts. I, I would be, uh, you know, you maybe not do everything correctly, you know? And he's saying, he was saying that within my heart, I am not following correctly. And then he even gave some examples of, you know, and I understood very clearly what I was doing wrong, you know. Because in, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, if one offers me a fruit, leaf, flower in love, then I will accept that. So he was pointing out the fact that I was not 
serving the deities according to my full capacity. And I understood that very clearly. So how could a stranger, you know, he, he wasn't dressed as a devotee, but how could a stranger see my heart and point out, give me direction in my Krishna consciousness? How is that possible? Anyway, I personally think it was Narada Muni. <laughs> Or, or it, it, it was some devotee. And then later I heard that when... Because Narada Muni travels all over the universe and, he, and he's always giving instruction. And whenever he appears, he can stay for as long as it takes to milk a cow. So he stayed about that long. And secondly, he's always immaculately dressed. But he, he was a fulgent. And so beautiful, I couldn't take my eyes off him, he was so beautiful. Anyway, I had to tell you that story. Huh? <laughs> um, yeah. And that, that instruction that he gave me is, is, is correct and, and still valid to this very day. You know? I'm all, I always have to check. Am I actually doing this correctly? You know, am I holding back? Am I being reserved? Am I, you know, like that? So he he so he gave me instruction that helped me, um, you know, uh, give my heart more to Krishna. And so and what was his instruction exactly? What did he tell you? Basically, he. The thing is, what he said in words. Uh, had more more meaning within my heart than the actual words themselves. You know, what he said was the same as what I received, but within my heart I realized from what he was saying that, uh, like, for example, um, let me think what I could... Um, when I'm dressing the deities, you know, then I'm getting all this inspiration Oh, you know, I can dress, um, dress the deities like this. I can arrange the the crown like this, you know. And so, I never followed it 100%. You know, not completely. I never did that. After that instruction, then I then I was trying to do that, you know. So that that full full uh, full uh, what do you call it? Full uh, um, effort, you know. Yeah, the, the the quality of the of the uh, uh, emotional involvement with the, with the service that that he pointed out to me, you know. Yeah, because Krishna likes love. Like Duradhan cooked the, the uh, invited Krishna for for prasad, or oh, wasn't even prasad. Anyway, he invited him for lunch, and uh, he had the best cooks, the best preparations. That would have been amazing, you know. Krishna didn't take one grain of rice, nothing. Because it wasn't cooked with love. So he never took anything, you know. So it's love. So, you know, that I understood. That we may not have Krishna praying fully, but we have a capacity. Just like in relationships with each other, you know, there, there can be love and affection, you know. And we can, like, if we love someone, then, uh, and we understand something that makes them happy then we will want to do that you know and we will want to do it completely so that that person will be 100 percent satisfied you understand so do this, our best right? huh do our best right do the best yeah so like quality factor should be quality yeah that's right yeah mm -hmm. so and you you connected to the guru uh, service to guru because you yeah that's how we connect yeah the, you know, uh, 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 in, uh, inquiry and service. And service. Yeah. Really, one can't really serve the guru properly unless one understands the moods of the guru. Yeah. yeah. And even at like, you know, I, 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 I had association with Prabhupada. I, I cooked for Prabhupada for two weeks and I had other association. And I can tell you, it's very difficult to maintain the association with the pure Vaishnava because our impressions from this life and previous lives 
uh, uh, creating inspiration and, and enthusiasm for material enjoyment in a way that that is is uh, what do you call it spanner in the works you know you know what that means uh, it's, it's incongruous it's not it's not it's not uh, it's not uh, harmonious you know mm-hmm. with the mood of the guru and it causes trouble that mentality and that consciousness you know it causes a disturbance with with pure Vaishnavas but they're very merciful I mean you know if a baby throws up on the mother she doesn't mind you know she will clean it up but Krishna won't do that give up all of you know it's very strict but Guru he's the mercy incarnation of Krishna so he will he will tolerate so many things. Mm. Yeah. So. Mm. Go on. What to do if Guru is unhappy with us? Sorry. If Guru is unhappy. Guru is unhappy. Yeah. It's rare that the Guru will become unhappy. I mean, okay. He he he. If we are doing something wrong, then he. And if if we're uh, uh, sincere. You know, to be a Vaishnava and, and to please Guru, if we are actually sincere, then he will chastise us. It's, 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 to be chastised by a pure Vaishnava, you can't imagine. The whole life just becomes nothing. You know? So, because the, 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 the Guru, he's giving. Um, you know, like I didn't really even understand what I was getting from Prabhupada. But when Prabhupada would withdraw that, then I realized I'm nothing. I, everything I have is Prabhupada. You know, everything. And, and, and my body, my, my wealth, family, anything else, it's, it's so small, it's so insignificant, it doesn't matter. Compared to 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 the to uh, yeah Prabhupada's uh, affection and love and support, you know, that was everything. So I and you know, there's an English saying that um, uh, you we don't understand the value of a thing until it's lost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in those times, I realized you know how important Prabhupada was. Anyway, so, um, mm, yeah, so, like, with, with uh, conditioned souls, um, because of material desires, you know, they're not stable. Um, you know, like, if you have a drop of water on the lotus, have you ever seen a drop of water on a lotus leaf? Mm-hmm. Huh? I have never seen, but on the internet. On the internet? Yeah, okay, but if you see a drop of water live, you can see that when the water is sitting on the, on the leaf, then the, the, uh, the leaf just has to just move just a fraction and the water will go. It's so unstable, you know? So if the lotus leaf uh, goes to the side, the, the drop of water will run off the leaf. So this is our situation, this is our condition. Um, you know, when we have material desires, when we are in the stage of anatta nivriti, you know anatta nivriti? You know what that is? No? Huh? So, Vishwanatha Chakravati Tako, he's one of our acharyas, and he wrote a book called Madhuri Kandambini. And in that book, he explains the different levels of bhakti or different levels of development of Krishna consciousness. So in the beginning is Agyata Sakriti, uh, and su- then Sakriti, then Sarusanga, then uh, Diksha, then Bhajana Kriya, then Anatta Nivriti. So, uh, 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 what is it? Sakriti. Sakriti. Uh, Sakriti uh, is a dev- It's like a spiritual bank balance. It's a develop. You understand Sakriti? You know Sakriti? So the Sakriti is like a, an accumulation, a bank, a spiritual bank balance. Yeah. So it grows when we're uh, uh, doing any Krishna conscious activity. No, no, no. I, I come to 
And uh, so agiata sakriti is when we're developing sakriti, but we don't know it's sakriti. Like, say if there's sankirtan uh, in a city, and, um, some, and someone's, I see this so many times, you see a group of uh, people walking past, and, um, and they say, Hare, and they, they're just joking. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, you know, with, with the Kirtan party. You know? That's Agyata Sakriti. They're developing Sakriti, but they don't know it. Just like if a bird uh, will drink the water that the pure devotee's foot has, has, has uh, 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 the imprint of a pure devotee in the ground when it's moist uh, and, and there's water there, then if a bird comes in or any animal comes and drinks that, they're getting secreted because they're getting the, the foot water from a pure Vaishnava. So a Gyata security can be in so many different ways. Once Prabhupada um, um, uh, 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 asked one of his disciples, who was a sculptor, to, to uh, make uh, deities of Gornitai and Radha and Krishna. And uh, so this, this sculptor, he was explaining to me the story because I'd never, I didn't know that. And Prabhupada wanted these deities to put in uh, department stores so that when people, people would see them, um, if they liked them, if they were attracted, they would buy them and put them on the mantelpiece or somewhere in the house, you know. So that's a Gyata Sakriti. Prabhupada was always uh, thinking h how to uh, help everyone in Krishna consciousness. So everyone, his disciples and also ordinary people. And that's one of the qualities of, of pure Vaishnava. So, Hare Krishna. Uh, so what was I saying before that? Just before the Agyata, oh that's right. Then Sakriti. Um, when Agyata Sakriti becomes mature, then uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So when, uh, when Agyata Sakriti becomes mature, it becomes Sukriti. And then when Sukriti, when Sukriti is there, then one will have some faith in Krishna. And uh, he will go to the temple and he will give some donation, maybe some service, um, chant uh, in the arti like that. So when Sukriti is there, then one has faith and attraction to Krishna. And then he will uh, consciously he will do, render some service to Krishna or Vaishnavas in different ways. So when Sakriti becomes mature, then, um, then one uh, uh, becomes eligible for Sadhu Sangha. Then Krishna will send Sadhu. And from that Sadhu Sangha, one develops faith that if I serve Guru, Vaishnavas and Krishna, then all my responsibilities are fulfilled. There's no extra thing I need to do. You know? Like we have so many responsibilities in family life. You know, to our wife or husband, to our children, to our parents, to our country, to the demigods, to so many different duties we have. But when when we get Sadhu Sangha, we understand that simply by serving Sadhu, Guru, Vaishnava, Krishna, then all those, all those responsibilities, all those duties are fulfilled. Like if you pour water on a tree, then all the leaves, flowers, twigs, branches, they all become nourished. So similarly, um, we don't, so, so you don't need to water every branch, every leaf, just water in the root. So Krishna is the root of everyone and everything. So if we serve Krishna, demigods become happy. And we become happy also because all our responsibilities and duties are fulfilled. So when we fulfill our responsibilities and duties, then we become happy. That's why Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Paritya Mamikam Sharanam Raja. Give up religion. Give up worshipping demigods. Give up all these things. And just simply surrender unto me. 
So then Sarusanga, then when one bites, because Sarus, from Sarusanga we're hearing, you know, Krishna consciousness is a known process of Krishna consciousness, <coughs> beginning with Shravanam, Kirtan, Ambition, Smaranam. So uh, Shravanam is the beginning. Without Shravanam, we don't know anything. And so Shravanam is the beginning and very important. So shra from Shravanam, then we understand that what is the goal of life, that Krishna Prem is the goal of life, that this material world uh, is a place of suffering where we go birth after birth after birth. This is not a good deal. Once Prabhupada said, in a lecture once, once Prabhupada said, um, who in their right mind will accept a life of, of, of death, of old age, of disease, <laughs> of birth? Uh, who, 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 can, who that can think properly, <laughs> who will accept such a life? <laughs> anyway, illusion is very powerful. Um, hmm. So then Diksha, then one will, will, will uh, attack Diksha from Sodhu. And then at the time of Diksha, then Sodhu, he will plant the seed, Bhakti Lata Bij, in the heart. This is described in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, that uh, uh, when, when the Guru uh, 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 gives that seed of, of Bhakti, uh, then the watering process is the nine, nine uh, devotional, uh, Shravanam, Kirtan, Ambitionis, Maranam, like that. Nine processes of, of devotional service that, um, that waters the, the, that seed. So that seed will then sprout. And the two, the two first little leaves that come from that seed is uh, Kleshagni and uh, Subhada. So Kleshagni is Klesh is suffering, is misery. So Agni is fire. So the miseries of this life is burnt to ashes. And uh, and uh, Subhada means our life becomes auspicious. We become very happy. And this is the beginning. This is not the end. We become happy from the beginning. <laughs> um, even even within three minutes, as Prabhupada said, if one makes a firm commitment that I will serve, I will give my heart, body, soul, mind, and anything I have, I will give to Guru. Now I will give. So Prabhupada said, within three minutes, all miseries are gone, all finished. Yeah. So um, then, uh, after Diksha is Bhajana Kriya, which is uh, performing performing um, uh, uh, devotional service under the direction of Sadhu. Because Sadhu, he knows who we are. He knows what level we're at. He knows what we need, what we don't need. So he will give us personal instruction. You should do like this, you should do this service, or you should do that service, you know? Like, like Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, he, he gave Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj personal instruction that you should preach to the English-speaking, you know, countries. That was personal instruction that he gave. And also he said, if you have any extra money, then spend on books, print books and distribute books. So, um, you know, Guru gives personal instruction. And along with that instruction, Guru gives the potency or the, or the power to actually do that. Like in, in the 70s, Prabhupada sent many of his disciples anywhere in the world. Like one of my god sisters, um, he sent, uh, she, she, uh, she's Australian, and she married a, huh? A time's up. Oh, damn. <laughs> I'll just finish the story about Prabhupada. Um, so, uh, yeah, so she married a, a guy from Sweden. So he, then Prabhupada told her, you should go and open a temple in Sweden with your husband because she was married to a Swedish man. Then she can live in Sweden. She can get, you know, citizenship. 
So they went there, you know. And before that, Prabhupada sent it to two or three other places in the world to open a temple. So she was opening temples, right? And um, and uh, she was the first devotee I talked to, actually, in in Australia when I met the devotees. Anyway, she she she's happy, you know. She, she's no problems, no worries. And so Prabhupada gave her that uh, that ability, you know, to to open a temple to attract people. You know, she was like Prabhupada was like working through her because she was dedicated to Prabhupada. So the Prabhupada and Guru here will work through us. And um, so anyway, now, now to this day, when she uh, leads, she's got a beautiful voice, leads really beautiful kita. So whenever she leads kita, tears are flow, flowing from her eyes. Sometimes she can't chant because her voice chokes up. <laughs> now, this is the mercy of Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. who, can, who, can, who can cry from chanting? Only by mercy of sadhu. You know, because no material qualification can enable you to spread Krishna consciousness, to preach, um, and 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 to have uh, feelings, you know, um, uh, emotions from from chanting and from uh, doing devotional service. Only by mercy of sadhu we can get that. I have to stop. <laughs> Hare Krishna.